So, um, uh, yeah, so I'm very happy to speak here and uh, I'm going to talk uh, about the infinite dimensional uh, Thurston theory and how some problems in uh, transcendental dynamics can be solved uh, using it. So, uh, let me uh, start right away with uh, our beloved uh, theorem, Thurston topological characterization of rational maps. So it says that the most critically finite branch covering F of the two sphere is Thurston equivalent uh, to a rational function. If I will not leave, there is no Thurston abstraction. So uh, how, to, how to prove it? Just on a very superficial level, uh, we define a map called uh, Thurston sigma map uh, acting on uh, the Teichmüller space of uh, the two sphere with uh, finitely many punctures. And these punctures are exactly the post-critical set uh, of uh, the post-critical set PF. Then we prove that uh, sigma or sigma squared is uh, strictly contracting. Uh, then we investigate whether sigma has fixed points, and uh, the required rational map uh, corresponds to the fixed point of uh, sigma. So. That's, uh, of course, there are many details beyond this, but it's a very superficial level, the general scheme. So, uh, but now we can ask a very naive, uh, maybe uh, direct question. Uh, what if uh, uh, the set PF is uh, infinite? Or more precisely, what if it does contain uh, infinite orbits? So, you can immediately, uh, ask a few more questions whether, uh, about following from the scheme of the proof for, for, for the classical theorem. So can we define this as a sigma map in this setting? Uh, will uh, the sigma map be strictly contracting again? Uh, or, and uh, does it have fixed points? So uh, just uh, to, uh, let us concentrate on the uh, presumably simplest case uh, uh, when uh, we have only one accumulation point, uh, let's agree that it's infinity, and uh, all uh, orbits are infinite. So in this case, uh, the uh, branch covering F is supposed to model either a polynomial uh, for which uh, all uh, critical values escape or a finite type transcendental type function so for which all singular values escape. Uh, uh, well, here this depends on your maybe uh, taste with what exactly you want to start, but uh, uh, my talk is about transcendental dynamics, so I uh, go for transcendental type functions. So, uh, but uh, before uh, stating directly, uh, uh, stating the problem uh, from uh, transcendental dynamics that we want to solve, uh, let us first uh, take a look uh, for a moment at the Teichmüller spaces we consider. So they were already kindly introduced by John Hubbard in the very first talk. These are uh, Teichmüller space, uh, spaces of uh, the complex plane with infinitely many punctures. Uh, so that these uh, punctures have uh, only one accumulation point at uh, infinity. And the, the, uh, then we use the standard uh, definition of the Teichmüller space, which is uh, simply the set of quasi-conformal self-homeomorphisms of the uh, relative <coughs> uh, composition with the fine map and isotopy relative to the set PF. Uh, uh, what you need uh, to remember is that uh, there is a special uh, distance function uh, called Teichmüller distance uh, on the Teichmüller space and with this uh, Teichmüller distance uh, the Teichmüller space is a complete metric space. Uh, so, okay, so we have this uh, infinite dimensional Teichmüller space, uh, then so what? Uh, wh what are the main difficulties? Uh, uh, here on this table, I just uh, give an overview of what complications you might have when trying to generalize the Thurston iterations uh, uh, to the infinite dimensional set. 
Well, uh, first, and maybe the quite uh, what's lying on the surfaces, of course, that the mapping class group uh, in the infinite case is infinitely generated. So it's, of course, it, uh, uh, since we are interested in the isotopic classes of maps, so uh, one needs uh, to have somewhat effective way to encode the uh, isotopy class of maps. And uh, of course, this is getting difficult if you have infinitely many punctures. So uh, second thing uh, is that uh, uh, un uh, unlike in the finite case, uh, there, uh, there is more than one. There is, in fact, uncountably many uh, different Teichmüller spaces. Uh, so, and uh, uh, here you already have uh, problems on the level on of the setup of the sig uh, of the sigma map uh, here. Uh, because uh, it's no longer enough to have just a topological branch covering. It might uh, turn out that uh, the map, the sigma map you define this way, uh, it will uh, map between different Teichmüller spaces. So you sort of need uh, an additional type of information, uh, sort of uh, about the complex structure. Uh, another thing that uh, was very important in the proofs of, uh, for example, the, uh, the, uh, 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 the proofs that uh, the sigma, sigma map is uh, strictly contracting in the finite case are two classical theorems by Teichmüller, Teichmüller existence theorem and Teichmüller uniqueness theorem, which claimed uh, existence and uniqueness of the extremal uh, maps in the Teichmüller space and uh, uh, told us how exactly they looked like. Uh, their Beltrami differential was represented via uh, an integrable quadratic differential, homomorphic quadratic differential. But the problem is that there are no such uh, theorems, uh, in, uh, general theorems in the infinite dimensional case. Uh, only some special cases are covered, for example, by Strebel's frame mapping theorem, but uh, they are. Uh, <coughs> so, so far, there is uh, no general theory. So, uh, in principle, for the map sigma, we don't know whether it is globally strictly contracting. Uh, uh, so, so uh, having in mind all this uh, sea of troubles that we have with infinite dimensional uh, Teichmüller spaces, we uh, uh, a good idea would be sort of to look for uh, situations when uh, we sort of expect to have the fixed point of the sigma map. Uh, one of the situations is uh, uh, appears in transcendental dynamics. I'm going to tell you about it in a moment. Uh, so, uh, yeah, this is uh, a talk on uh, complex dynamics, so there should be a picture of the model process, this is mine. So, uh, uh, yeah, so uh, for the model process, it's well known that uh, every parameter in the complement of the model process uh, can be uniquely characterized by the uh, speed of escape and uh, combinatorics of escape. Uh, of the uh, critical value corresponding to the polynomial or having this parameter. So, and uh, the points uh, having the same uh, combinatorics, uh, the parameters corresponding to the critical values having the same combinatorics, they're aligned in form of uh, external rays of the Mandelbrot set. And um, uh, uh, point, uh, parameters uh, that are closer to infinity on, on this ray, they escape faster. They, have, they correspond to, singular val uh, to critical values escaping faster uh, with bigger speed of escape. So now you can ask, can we do uh, something similar for transcendental tire function? And uh, the answer is uh, uh, yes. And uh, this is one of our uh, main results. Before Going to it, uh, yeah, I want to tell you about which uh, families of transcendental tire functions we want to consider. Uh, basically, there is one of them, which are compositions of polynomials with the exponential. 
and uh, the very special case which you might use as a toy example. I suggest if you are new to this and you think about the exponential family, this e to the z plus kappa, where kappa is a parameter. So, and uh, note that uh, all these functions are of finite type, and more precisely, we have uh, they have exactly one uh, asymptotic value, p of zero, and uh, a few critical values, which correspond to the critical values of the uh, polynomial. So, uh, uh, yeah, he, here is just an example for you of the part of the parameter space uh, for the exponential family. So, uh, here, uh, as for uh, the complement of the model, brought the, the point having the same uh, co uh, combinatorics, they are aligned in form of uh, parameter rays. And po uh, parameters correspond to points that lie closer to infinity on this parameter ray, they escape faster. Uh, so, now we are ready to for the theorem. So uh, let me read it with you. Uh, so uh, this classification theorem. So uh, given a polynomial P and a uh, transcendental entire function F0, which, uh, which is composition of P with exponential, uh, having M finite singular values. And given a list of prescribed uh, speeds of escape and combinatorics, each corresponding to the, so the, it's ordered list, each corresponding to uh, each particular singular value of F0. Then uh, the uh, parameter space of F0 contains uh, exactly uh, one unique entire function G, so, so that uh, its uh, uh, singular values escape exactly as prescribed. Uh, and uh, vice versa, so every function in this parameter space uh, for which all singular values escape uh, fast is uh, one of this. So uh, here I uh, should give a comment that uh, the, uh, this uh, conversely statement is, is just to show you so, so that we do not really restrict uh, the um, generality because uh, in some sense, almost all points, uh, all escaping points uh, in this family, they escape fast. Uh, for experts, uh, maybe ex except of the endpoints of uh, dynamic rays. So, and uh, the parameter space uh, uh, for me uh, is uh, quasi conformal equivalence class. Introduced, for example, in the talk by Nuria, I think, yeah. Uh, so it's, I, I just call it parameter space. Uh, so, uh, now, uh, how do we prove this theorem? Uh, so, uh, again, go with, with a general scheme. So, first we define a quasi-regular branch cover in F that models the desired uh, behavior uh, of singular values. So, uh, and... Uh, uh, using this quasi-regular branched covering, we define the Thurston iteration and uh, the sigma map. Uh, and uh, in this case, there is no really uh, this issue of mapping between uh, different Teichmüller spaces. So you have really well-defined Thurston iteration on the Teichmüller space, infinite dimensional one. Then uh, we construct a compact subset uh, of this Teichmüller space that is invariant under sigma very special compact invariant subset, such that uh, the restriction of sigma on this compact invariant subset is strictly contracting. So <coughs> uh, somehow on strict con contraction of sigma is easier to prove on this subset. <coughs> and then uh, finally, we prove that there is a unique fixed point uh, uh, <coughs> of uh, sigma in this compact invariant subset. And it corresponds exactly to the desired uh, function. So uh, basically, uh, basically, item four fo almost follows from items two and three, just by the argument, uh, almost like in Banach fixed point theorem. So you just have a, a compact a subset. You have a max sigma a map, a continuous map sigma defined on it, which is uh, strictly uh, contracting. And then it must have a fixed point. So. <coughs> So, 
uh, out of all these four items, the heaviest one is item two. So I'm going to tell you just a little bit about how we define this quasi-regular branch covering and how, in a few words, how we construct the, this compact invariant subset. Uh, so uh, the setup. Uh, we choose uh, uh, some uh, b uh, some function f not uh, well. It's it's given to us in the classification theorem. So and uh, assume we want to vm are its singular values. So for, uh, you can think again about the exponential, and here you can do everything quite explicitly. You can choose, uh, for example, f not like this. Then uh, what we do? So uh, in the escaping set of f not, we find m points uh, q1, q2, and qm that have the speed of escape and combinatorics that we have from the, uh, this list given in the classification theorem that we want. So they exist just by the dynamical properties of the, of the escaping points uh, in this family. So, uh, uh, wait, uh, yeah. So next thing is we define the quasi-conformal capture C, which is simply a quasi-conformal homeomorphisms, a homeomorphism that maps uh, each uh, singular value to the corresponding uh, escaping point, and at the same time it does not spoil combinatorics. Next thing, we consider the quasi-regular map F, which is a composition of this capture C with F0. So, uh, and now this new map F, it serves exactly as the branched covering which models the desired dynamics of singular values. But what well, the problem is, of course, that it's quasi-regular map, but we, in our classification theorem, we want it to be uh, entire. So this is where, uh, why we start the uh, Thurston Sigma iteration in order to find uh, that is that entire function, which is just an equivalent to it, that it will be the desired function. So, um, so uh, yeah, the, uh, so a sigma map is defined in a, the following very simple way, just uh, by uh, the uh, <coughs> Thurston diagram. So basically, we uh, pull back the uh, complex structure from below. Uh, here and the, uh, the, the Beltrami differential, and then we integrate it, and we get some uh, quasi-conformal map p tilde. Then uh, <coughs> uh, it is a, a well-defined uh, uh, map on the Teichmiller spaces, just because uh, f is chosen to be quasi-regular. So, for the exponential family, everything again can be. Uh, made quite is explicit. So, uh, in fact, phi tilde recovers from uh, phi via uh, logarithm, and uh, the issue is, of course, to choose the right branch of the logarithm. Uh, this must be encoded somehow. So, then uh, uh, you can state a theorem which is uh, a sort of uh, analog we, we, we have an analogous theorem for uh, in the from in the proof of the classical theorem. So that it's a classical theorem that the sigma the sigma map has a fixed point that corresponds to the transcendental attar functions uh, that we uh, 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 that that has exactly the prescribed singular escaping dynamics. So in fact, we don't have any Levy abstractions. So our iterations uh, always uh, converge. Uh, at, at, at least there is at least one fixed point. So and uh, yeah, and the, the proof of this theorem. So the classification theorem is basically reduced to the proof of this theorem, and uh, to prove it, we uh, need to do these two items from the grand scheme from uh, a few slides earlier. So <coughs> now uh, I tell you a few words how exactly we construct this uh, compact uh, invariant subset. Let me find the chalk. So, 
So the thing is that so we have uh, <coughs> uh, this, the uh, post uh, singular set uh, PF. So it's an infinite sequence of points converging uh, uh, to infinity. And uh, then uh, if uh, these points uh, start to move separately, then it, it induces a, a pass in the Teichmüller space. First in the moduli space, and then shifts to the pass in the Teichmüller space. So somehow by prescribing how exactly uh, these uh, punctures are allowed to move, we uh, describe exactly some paths in the Teichmüller space, and uh, we can uh, construct this invariant compact subset by uh, declaring how exactly these points are allowed to move. And uh, in a way, we somehow uh, construct isotopies between identity maps uh, uh, and some other quasi-conformal homeomorphisms. And uh, we declare the points to be in the, our compact invariant subset if uh, they can be uh, connected to, uh, by such paths to the identity. So uh, how exactly this rule does look like. So we have our post-critical, post-singular set PF. So somewhere here. So the point is that in our family, uh, the uh, escaping points, they escape very fast. So basically there might be some point here, then the next will be somewhere here. <coughs> and uh, uh, <coughs> uh, what do we do? We find some good index starting uh, from which uh, we have a really good estimates on the escaping points. This we, we, we know this uh, uh, just because uh, we, we take them f uh, since we know the explicit form of the map F naught. Then we find this first good gap between this finite more chaotic part and uh, the other part with infinitely many punctures, but uh, uh, over which we have sort of good, good control. We understand where, where they are placed. Then we draw a circle of radius rho. So it will be a disk of radius rho. Some big uh, uh, rho is some big positive real number. And what do we do next? These points that are outside of zero, they are allowed to move just in uh, small neighborhoods of themselves. While inside of zero, uh, the points uh, are allowed to uh, move in the following way. First, uh, they should uh, never leave zero. Second thing is that they are not allowed to come uh, too close to each other, so there is, a, there is a positive lower bound between them. And the third thing is that they are not allowed to wind too much around each other. So, in a way, our, uh, our uh, compact invariant subset may be, uh, in some sense, decomposed into uh, two uh, subspaces of two different Teichmüller spaces. Uh, C, um, C zero and C uh, uh, in the complement of C zero. So the second one uh, is the subset of the Teichmüller space of uh, the complement of zero. Uh, induced by uh, quasi-conformal homeomorphisms that uh, first uh, fix this circle and just uh, slightly move this point. So basically it's a piece of the uh, moduli space. And the first one is, uh, is an analogous subspace, uh, but uh, for, for the inside of zero. So that, uh, we, we consider the Teichmüller space of uh, zero itself, then consider a subspace induced by homeomorphisms that fix the, uh, the circle zero and uh, that move the inner points exactly as uh, prescribed, uh, as allowed. So it will be some uh, uh, bounded neighborhood of uh, identity in the Steichmüller space. 
So, and the whole point, of course, the, 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 the whole difficulty of the constructions lies uh, in uh, making this decomposition invariant under sigma, so that the, this zero does not grow bigger. Uh, okay, so, uh, so this is about uh, the construction of the uh, compact invariant subset. And somehow uh, proving uh, that uh, the uh, restriction of sigma on CF is strictly contracting uh, can be done using Strebel's frame mapping theorem and some, uh, perhaps also some other finite dimensional considerations because uh, you can see in this compact invariant subset uh, the, uh, it behaves it uh, it behaves almost like finite dimensional Teichmüller space. So nothing is happening near infinity. So uh, basically, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the whole action is happening inside of zero. Uh, so uh, yeah. So th this is approximately how uh, the, the proof of the classification theorem goes and the fixed point. So last thing uh, that I want to say before as a conclusion is that uh, we can also study the dependence uh, of the parameters. So uh, uh, we have, uh, so our, uh, if, if we fix uh, the function f naught and we fix the parameter space, uh, then uh, uh, if you remember, for in the classification theorem, we we get our list of the desired speeds of escape uh, and combinatorics, and uh, sort of uh, now we want we want to check how exactly this function uh, g realizing the speeds of escape and combinatorics uh, changes uh, when when exactly these parameters are changing. So, and uh, the short answer, without going into the, the details, is that uh, it is simply continuous. Of course, uh, so of each uh, ti is just the uh, potential, so it's uh, uh, it, just a real number, so we can take a real, uh, uh, the topology of the real numbers, and each si is an infinite sequence of integers, so one should take the something Slightly, stro stronger, slightly stronger than the product topology on the air. So, um, yeah. Uh, so, and basically, this continuity in parameters, uh, roughly speaking, follows uh, from the fact that when we perturb the parameters, this uh, radius of d rho, this number rho, it stays. Uh, it stays stable under perturbations of parameters. So now we uh, come to the conclusion. So, uh, well, in our project, we classify uh, entire transcendental functions of the precise form, which are positions of the polynomial and the exponential, uh, and for which uh, sin also singular values escape and escape uh, fast. So this is done the classification theorem. So second, uh, we prove it using the, sort, uh, the analog of the classical Thurston's characterization theorem, but for a singularly infinite case. Uh, and we consider the iterations on uh, the infinite dimensional Teichmüller space. So uh, this sort of, uh, with the infinite dimensionality, uh, uh, a lot of challenges do come. You can see some of them here. These are, no way, the uh, unique ones. Uh, so, uh, oh. okay. So, uh, and and uh, to avoid these challenges, so so, so we, we, even though they are very interesting to deal with, and we perhaps to find some other uh, ways uh, ways uh, to solve them. We do not uh, tackle them directly, but rather we construct a special subset in the Teichmüller space, inside of which uh, we can deal with them easier. So, and uh, yeah, our uh, techniques, they are no way restricted by the uh, explicit form of the family of uh, 
uh, there are functions that we consider, but uh, they can be general, they definitely can be generalized. That, uh, and, well, perhaps uh, one, well, good uh, family, good potential family uh, for, for generalization are the data of entire functions of finite type and uh, finite order. So, uh, thank you. Uh, thanks, Kostya. Are there any questions here in the audience? If not, are there any questions online? Um, okay, Kostya has a question. Yeah, there was a slide in your presentation where you circled uh, transcendental entire functions and you discarded polynomials with escaping ah, critical yeah, points. Just what can you say beginning. about that case? Yeah. Oh, sorry. If I could. What can you say about that case? Well, uh, so <coughs> the thing is that um, I don't, uh, well, in principle, uh, I checked and my techniques are uh, seem to be applicable also for polynomials. You know, in, in a sense, polynomials are both uh, better and worse than transcendental attire functions because, for example, for transcendental attire functions, one important property that we use uh, is that we, our orbits escape uh, very fast. So they escape uh, with the speed of the real exponential, the real bar grows very fast. We don't have this property for the polynomials. But for the polynomials, don't, they don't have, uh, on the other hand, a singular value. So re there is no problem that, for example, under certain iterations, some point come uh, very close to the singular values and maybe by, during this iteration sort of speed up towards uh, minus infinity or something like this. So uh, in principle, the short answer, I think they are applicable, uh, but I haven't ever written it strictly. It really should be different for polynomials because all the polynomials outside of the Mandelbrot set, for instance, are quasi-conformally conjugate and they all belong to the same Teichmuller space. As a, as a result, I think there is no chance that such a compact set can exist. Uh, uh, and because, after all, you could be anywhere on, the external, on an external ray and that is not a compact set. Uh, so I, I, I mean, I'm immensely impressed the, that Kosia has managed to, uh, to find this compact set, uh, but it, it really depends on being in the right Teichmuller space and isolating which point of these external rays belongs to what compact, uh, to what Teichmuller space. If it turns out they all belong to different Teichmuller spaces. And this compact set really only exists because that compact set is preventing the point from going off to infinity. I suspect that still something like this can be done. Well, I, I never did it very carefully, but still something can be done. I, so, so, so I don't really uh, vouch va va self to, yeah. Okay. Um, are there any more questions? If not, let's thank Kostya again. Thank you. Thank you.